then let's uh, begin the lecture part of class. So, we're, talk we're talking about the environment today. Well, you can download the environment PPT from the website. Also, we have the reading from the Geshe Khan. We have the reading also on the internet course, which is uh, chapter 6. So, when we're talking about the environment, we can split up into different areas, so-called planetary boundaries. Do you understand boundary? Yes. Boundary is you can't go outside. So the planet has some boundaries, which means uh, <coughs> we can't go too far or we can damage the planet. So here we have climate change, ocean acidification. We're going to talk about each one, right? Ozone, layer, water, land use, biodiversity, and so on. So we have nine uh, boundaries we'll talk about. The first one is climate change. What does GHG mean? What do you think? If you see GHG, what are people talking about? Greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas is like CO2. So the Earth has got warmer by 0 0.9 degrees Celsius in the last century compared with the temperature before the Industrial Revolution. So scientists disagree. Some, some scientists think it's the world just naturally gets warmer and colder over time. But other scientists think it because of increased carbon in the atmosphere, the world is getting warmer. Most scientists think that way. Uh, so if we keep going like this, the Earth will warm by several degrees by the end of the 21st century. CO2 is the inevitable byproduct of burning fossil fuels, and fossil fuels have created the modern economy. So there is a debate of some of the emerging economies now, which are using a lot of fossil fuels, especially coal, makes a lot of CO2. But England used a lot of coal in the Industrial Revolution, and this caused a lot of carbon to go into the atmosphere. Do you think it's fair for England now to tell other countries, don't use coal? What yes. do you think? It is fair? Yes, yes or? because they don't use it anymore. They don't use it anymore? China said to other countries don't use coal, it mm -hmm. would be nice. But from England, they don't do it anymore. Okay, so there's two arguments, right? England think uh, we should... We shouldn't use coal because it, da it damages the environment. But other countries, developing economies, say coal is much cheaper than oil. So we need to use coal to develop our economy. And you already got your chance 100 years ago. You used a lot of coal, the cheap energy, to develop your economy. So now we need to use the cheap energy to develop our economy. What do you answer to that, if they say that to you? I answered it 100 years ago. People didn't know that it's a uh, seriously damaging environment we are living in, mm -hmm. and we have only one Earth, so proportionately most of us. But if we don't use the cheap energy, we can't develop our economy. We have to find other sources of energy. <laughs> not as cheap. They're not as cheap There's as There's one million people in China. At least one of them must have any idea how to do it. Okay, so we can try to improve it, but you can understand the challenges, right? Some countries have different opinions. So, here we can say, see that the world is getting a little bit warmer. The hot and cold areas, we can see that the uh, temperature is getting hotter. Then we have the ocean acidification. So, the uh, CO2 in the atmosphere also goes into the ocean, making carbonic acid. Carbonic acid makes this H plus ion and HCO3 ion by carbonate. <coughs> and this H plus uh, rises the acidity. Do you understand acidity? What has acid? What is acidity? Orange. Oranges. Yeah. What's the opposite of acid? H. Yes. Sour or ba base, right? 
for problem in the ocean is acidity. Is acidity good for life? Yes. Acid things are good for life? No. Not really, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> it's not good for corals, shellfish, lobsters, plankton. So we can see these days some strange events like some on the US East Coast just a lot of suddenly a lot of starfish die or a lot of uh, uh, small fish come up on the beach dead because of this kind of problem. So again we can see that the ocean here is uh, the pH changes so we can see it's getting worse. Right? This is the ozone hole in the world over Australia. So we have a problem with the ozone. Do you understand ozone? No. Yes. So ozone actually is a good example of how the international community can come together to solve a problem. Because it's actually it's not getting much worse these days. It was getting a lot worse until the 90s. In the 90s people realized that using the aerosol can do you know aerosol can? You're too young. We used to use a lot of aerosol cans when I was young for spraying things like deodorant, right, or spray cleaning things or other things, right? So the because of these scientific discoveries, then we we found some way that the aerosol can is harming the ozone or something else is harming the ozone. So the countries were able to make global agreements. So. Because of this, the ozone is not as much as a threat as it was before. Okay? This protects us from the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So this is, some people say that maybe countries are not good at making agreements usually, but when they're under pressure and there's a real crisis, then they can get a little bit better at making agreements. So they say, don't worry too much about the environment, because when it comes to a bad situation, then the governments will get together and they would give the, the example of the ozone situation. So, the next one is nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, <coughs> this is like fertilizer. Do you grow any plants? Do you do any gardening? Yes. You do? Yes. So, do you give any fertilizer to the plant? Fertilizer. Mull is water. Do you understand fertilizer? Yes. Yeah. What does fertilizer mean? Garum? Do you give garum to the plant? Uh, no, water. Fertilizer. Only water. Why not? <laughs> Oh. You're doing it wrong. You have to do fertilizer. <laughs> Plants will grow better in the future, right? So, uh, here we can see fertilizer. So, fertilizer has nitrogen and phosphorus. So, if we didn't use any fertilizer, we would only get between 500 kilograms and one ton of food per hectare. But because we use fertilizer, we get three to five tons per hectare. A lot of uh, food, right? You know you put all your food, rubbish, umchik sulegi, together. Ah. Yes, it makes fertilizer and helps create to make more grain. But this uh, is called eutrophication. Could you spell this if I asked you? Yes, yes you could. What okay. is that? It is a high nutrient concentrations. So high concentration of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water, leading to algal blooms. And hypoxia. Hypoxia means there's no oxygen in the water, so the fish die. So I think the best explanation is a picture. This is algae. So because of the nitrogen and the phosphorus in the river ways, you can see that this guy's having a nice time swimming in the summertime, right? In the river. So already this is happening in more than 100 uh, big estuaries and rivers around the world, this kind of problem. Then uh, fresh water, so <coughs> we use most water for agriculture, 
70%. Industry, 20%, 10% household use. Uh, so farmers now are going further and further down into the ground to find the water. California has a serious problem these days. In California they may grow a lot of oranges and grapes and so on. But the farmers have to keep drilling further and further into the ground because the, they can't get enough water and the groundwater is getting lower and lower and lower in California. So they have a problem there. And the water is going down faster than it's being recharged. So the US Midwest, Northern China, Northern India, Pakistan, also Spain has some, some problem uh, water these days. Then land use and biodiversity. So using the land can cause a disruption for the ecosystem and species survival. Was there some uh, controversy in Korea about some five rivers project? Four rivers project. <laughs> I made a mistake of the number of rivers. But four is a lot of rivers. What was the controversy? Don't know. Does anybody know? Why were NGOs complaining? So some of the bird species or local animal species could become extinct, right? Or they couldn't survive. It would change the way the land is being used. So this is an example. If we change the way the land is used, then uh, we can some species can disappear. What about in the Amazon jungle? Every minute, something like every minute, they put down a new football pitch in the Amazon jungle of trees. They lose some species. Do you think that's okay? No. No? People, people need more beef, meat, then, so we need more land for cows. And we need more paper. So what do you say to people who say that? Okay. So anyway, Brazil. Most of the Amazon jungle is in Brazil. Brazil has 180 million people. A lot of those people want land, right? They want land, new land to farm. So do you think it's okay for other countries to say to Brazil, for big Hollywood stars to go to Brazil and tell the Brazilian people, you can't cut down the trees. We need those trees for the world. What do you think? America has no right to say that. They don't, you don't think the Hollywood stars can go there and say, don't cut down the trees? Yes. Mm. As long as they have better solutions, they can say it. Yes, you think they can say it? Right. So again, we have this they have better solutions for the problem, mm. then they can say it. Do you think anybody can force Brazil not to cut down the trees in the Amazon jungle? No. <laughs> or Brazil can do what they want? Yes. <coughs> so you see, you can have this kind of complication, right? Every country has its own law. We don't have an international army. <coughs> we can try to encourage countries at the meetings, like the G20. Brazil is part of the G20, right? To uh, maybe we can give them some deal, better trade condition if they don't cut down the trees, that kind of thing. So here is the biodiversity in the land. So we can see marine means the sea species, freshwater species. And land species. Species means a type of animal, like the dodo, right? So this is measuring the biodiversity of the world. It means the population of different species. So we can see that the number of species is going down and the population is going down, okay? So we have 555 species of animals on the land, 323 in the water, and 267 in the sea. <coughs> so overall it fell about 40%. So this is from the World Wildlife Federation. So the number of animals is going down. Biodiversity. So <coughs> we talked about aerosol. When we burn coal or diesel, other 
things, we can have very small particles in the air. This can cause smog, right? Do you have much smog in Korea? Yes. Do you have much smog in China? These days we can see on the street in Korea they have some sign and tells us the air quality. Gives that kind of information, right? How many micrometers of particles are in the air? That kind of thing. <coughs> is it yellow or is it red or is it green? So we can see that in China they have this, this is smoggy morning in Beijing. Some international companies moved their workers from Beijing, took them out of Beijing. Not because they're worried about the workers' health, but they're worried they could get sued after 10 years. The worker could sue them <coughs> because the smog was over the safe limits. So they could say, oh, the company made me work in the unsafe condition. So then they get some loan problem. They sue the company. The company has to pay a lot of compensation, right? So some international companies are actually moving <coughs> some uh, workers from uh, Beijing, which is the main pollution area in China. Uh, so, we talked before about the problem, is that as we grow, we can damage the environment. So how can we grow without damaging the environment? So this is the relationship between energy consumption and GDP. This is all a country. This is a country's GDP, right, uh, on this line. Per person, this is up to 10,000. We can see not that many countries are over 10,000. That's high income country, middle income country, low income country. And then this is the energy consumption. Have you ever seen the satellite picture of North Korea at night? Yes. Mm. Is it very bright? No. Mm. It's very dark. If you look at Mongolia at night time, <coughs> North Korea and Mongolia are around here, right? So they don't use much energy. But as the country's GDP goes up, they use a lot of energy. So, uh, these days we have no oil price because they increase the production. But people are saying because countries like India and China are increasing their GDP and they have 1 billion people, they're going to need a lot of energy in the future. Okay? So the trend will be that China and other countries are going to need more and more energy in the world. So... <coughs> As they consume more energy, we can also get more pollution problem. So we can see from this graph the issue. We want to improve our economy, but as we improve our economy, we consume more energy, and we're going to have more smog, more other of all of these problems. <coughs> this is the CO2 in the atmosphere, and we can see that this is thousands of years, so 800,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago. So if they look, they can judge this by looking in the trees and looking at the skeletons and other things, how much carbon was in the atmosphere. So we can see that it, some scientists say, oh, it's just normal, it happens all the time, it's a trend. But there's a, some spike here recently that most people think is caused by the fossil fuels. So because of our fossil fuel reliance, we can see a great increase in the frequency of heat waves. We looked at the maps earlier about the heat wave. Do you understand heat wave? No. What does wave mean? So a heat wave is uh, you, it's just really hot for one week. Like in Korea, what would be really hot in Korea? How many degrees would be really hot that you're not used to? Do you think it's really hot? 35, 36? 36, so one week of 36 degrees, that would be a heat wave in Korea, right? What would be a heat wave in Denmark? 26. 26 degrees for one week. Okay, so uh, this is it. Uh, just showing 1975, there wasn't much. This is a uh, temperature, abnormalities means like heat wave or cold wave. So 1976, 65 or 55, not much <coughs> heat waves. 2006, we can see nowadays a lot of uh, extreme weather, like very hot weather. In Australia, you can see here they have a drought. 
Do you understand drought? Yes. yes. What does drought mean? No rain. How do you say it in Korean? Kamun. 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 We can see California also. California had that problem here. Very strong heat wave. So, also we can have cold weather. Did you notice in Korea the last couple of winters it was very cold or there was some cold wave? What's very cold in Korea? Uh, minus what? Minus 15? Minus 30? If you guys are lucky you didn't come in the winter time, you can go to minus 15 or is that fine? So what's the solution? So we're, oh sorry, we're seeing more mega droughts. Mega droughts is very long drought, like in California, Australia. Mega floods, extreme form, flood storms, more extinction of species, crop failures, sea level rising. Some countries are worried about the sea level rising. Some small islands could be disappeared in a few years, right? And uh, the ocean getting acidified. So discuss with your partner, what is the solution to the problem?
Yes? I would put higher taxes to the companies who use fossil fuels. Okay. And I would also inform the public mm -hmm. that if they buy products from these companies, they, they must realize that <coughs> it's more dangerous for environment than products which are more expensive, but they are more uh, ecologically stable. Okay. But higher taxes will do. Higher taxes? <coughs> Any other suggestions? Of regulation. So we need to try a decarbonization of the energy system. So energy efficiency, we can see that project like you mentioned or if you buy a car you have to pay a much higher tax if it has a big engine. If you buy the, the electrical appliances they have one or two or three or four, you can see the energy efficiency nowadays on the product, right? Electric, uh, low carbon electricity, energy efficiency, using less energy. Uh, instead of using oil, use electric, like electric cars, that kind of thing. Do you think the government will make regulation in the future that companies have, people have to use electric cars in your lifetime? You won't be using petrol cars anymore? In Norway, there are very low taxes for buying electric car compared to normal cars, so people don't want to No, there are no taxes. No taxes, okay, no taxes. No, they can not any more good anymore because people are buying too much. And then there is zero tax for electric cars, and even the parking is for free only for electric cars. I think they have similar in Korea, similar one in Korea for that kind of thing, like half price parking or. Uh, for a one liter car, very small one liter car engine, you can get the half price parking and the tax is almost nothing on the one liter engine car. But do you think people will just use electric cars in 10 years and 20 years? Yes. What's going to be the pushing point? Do you think it's going to be money or people coming together and making it the solution? Those bullies. Those bullies. Both of electric car is not use engine, mm -hmm. so this car is very quiet. Yes. I, well, I mean, do you think the solution will become because the oil gets very expensive, so people start using electric cars because it's cheaper? Or do you think the solution will come because <coughs> governments make some agreement to use electric cars? Which do you think will make? Do you think first the government would make an agreement? So people, some people say they believe in the markets, and they say that the markets will solve every problem. So they say oil, oil gets lower in the world, then the price of oil will go up a lot, then people won't be able to afford to buy those things anymore. Right? But other people say, no, it's going to be too late. Then first of all, we need to make some regulation <coughs> about that. So uh, we... What about giving loans to companies who make renewable energy? Do you think that's a good idea? Giving a loan to a company who wants to make renewable energy? Yes. We saw already, right? The Chinese government has that policy, or other, other banks or private companies have that kind of policy, right? They promote the loans to companies who are trying to invent this kind of low carbon electricity. So that's a big. For the last few years that has been a big area. Um, <coughs> just for agriculture, we saw that agriculture uses 70% of the fresh water. So we need to find that also it uses a lot of fertilizer. So we need to find a new way of agriculture also. Uh, using less damage to the ecology. So our farm system is not that sustainable. We can improve the farm system. What about population? Also, if we have a lower fertility rates, it means that the household can have uh, uh, more education for their children, more child survival, uh, more decent jobs, and less discrimination for women. So, we can see that these days the fertility is going down. But the least developed regions the purple line are still having more children than the <coughs> more developed regions, the green line. Okay? So then the, it's, the emerging economy is 
in the middle, but it used to be a bigger difference in the 50s. This is seven children per woman, right? Do you want to have seven children? More than that. Do you want to have more? Yes. Well, this is the average, so many women have more than seven children. Some women have less. So, you better start soon, right? Okay, yeah, you're doing the group, group project with Martin, right? Maybe you can figure it out. Maybe you're thinking about that already, right? Half from Martin. <laughs> so anyway, these days it's around two. Two children in most countries, right? Korea has low birth rate, around one. Japan has around one. Right? Just how many brothers and sisters do you have? Let's check, Korean students. Hands up, no brothers and sisters. One brother and sister or sister. Two brothers or sisters. Three brothers and sisters. Four brothers and sisters. Okay, so if people live in Korea, it was a maximum between uh, zero and two. Okay. What about you guys? Uh, three siblings. Three. One. One. I have four <laughs> siblings. Two brothers and two sisters. Whoa. Yeah, Ireland has a high birth rate in Europe. So then, uh, let's talk about the Sustainable Development Goals. So, we had the Millennium Development Goals, which finished in 2010. The Millennium Development Goals was 10 goals that the UN made with the, uh, along with the G20 and so on. Do you understand the goal? What is a goal? Aim or target, right? So, do you know John F. Kennedy? Yes. yes. He says, by defining our goal more clearly, by making it seem more manageable and less remote, we can help all people to see it, to draw hope from it, and to move irresistibly towards it. So, JFK was involved in the goal of getting to the moon. So, do you think that seemed impossible to go to the moon? Seems like impossible? Yeah. Impossible goal? But JFK was able to achieve that goal. Or do you think it was just a video camera? Yeah. <laughs> and it was all done in public. Yeah. Some people say it. <laughs> Conspiracy theories, right? But anyway, there are a lot of satellites in space, so I don't believe in conspiracy theories, right? So basically the point is, if we get a group of people together who have a common vision, we can achieve anything that appears to be impossible. We have the same goal, we're all working towards that goal, right? Getting made in our project. So, <coughs> we can uh, go get there. So there are a lot of inspirational examples from uh, history. Uh, do you know the Roman Empire? The Roman Empire? Uh, the Roman Empire was just starting off, but they had a problem. They were very good at fighting on land, but they weren't very good at fighting on at sea. Did I tell this story before in this class? No. So, uh, there was a country called Cartagena. So this is uh, Italy. And this was controlled by the Romans, the land. They are very good at fighting on land with their swords. And this is all controlled by Cartagena, North Africa. And Cartagena, for 500 years, had the best navy in the world. Do you understand navy? Yes. And they uh, ruled the sea. So Rome could not get this island, or this island, even though they're very close to Rome, because this, they didn't have enough boats to capture the island. So one Roman general said, in order for our security, we have to go out we can't just stay at home. We have to go out and take these islands. So we have to defeat the Carthaginian navy. But people told him, uh, no, you can't do that because we don't have any boats. And they have, been, they have the best navy in the world. They've been doing that for 500 years. And he told them, in just six months, if you follow me, in just six months, we can build a navy 
and beat uh, the <coughs> Carthaginians in a naval battle. So the people just laughed at him, right? They said, we don't have any boats and we don't know how to fight at sea. We could never do that, right? But he managed to motivate the people. He showed good leadership. And uh, they, in just six months, they built uh, this kind of boats. They took copied one boat from the, uh, this was his name, Gaius, Gaius Julius. Uh, they copied the ships and they built all the ships and they won the war and that was the start of the Rome, Roman Empire. Okay. Then this was a good example for the Roman people after that. This commander who told them that anything is possible. If we all have the same vision, if people all have the same goal and vision and we all work together uh, to achieve the vision, then we can do it, right? Very confident. So a lot of CEOs think that way too. They're kind of like overconfident people. Okay, so you can think that way in your life too. If you really make a goal, and especially if you work with other people towards achieving the goal, then uh, it can happen. So this is the idea that the UN is using, making these kind of goals, that we have to make a vision together in the world, <coughs> and according to that vision, we can achieve. We, we said the same thing for ethics program. First we need to make a vision. Do you understand vision? JFK had a vision, or Gaius Julius had a vision. If we can make a vision, and then if we can get people to follow us, that's the main point. <coughs> In the history, the main difference between the successful leaders and unsuccessful leaders is they had, everybody had a vision, but the successful leaders could get the motivate the people and convince them to follow them and commit to their vision. So we need a vision about uh, how to do this, sustainable development. So the UN made these sustainable development goals, so-called. So uh, they took stock of 40 years of international environmentalism and 20 years of the three big environmental treaties. And what they realized was very unsettling. The diagnosis first made in 1972 was correct that economic growth with social inclusion and environmental sustainability were still unmet and were getting worse. So even though we made these kind of treaties before, things were getting worse. So we can see all of the leaders here, United States Conference on Sustainable Development. Okay. Uh, so these sustainable development goals should be action-oriented, concise, easy to understand, limited in number, so there are 10. Aspirational means we're a little bit overconfident. We want to then to aspire to something. Global, universally applicable to all countries. So the go here we can see the word stakeholders. Governments should drive implementation with the active involvement of all stakeholders. So here are the goals. End extreme poverty including hunger. So the Millennium Development Goals, they had similar type of goal and they managed to get 1 billion people out of poverty which they did very well in the last 10 years, right? Achieve economic development within the planetary bounder Ensure effective learning for children Achieve gender equality Improve the agricultural systems Empower the cities Curb the climate change Secure the ecosystem Transform governance in the public sector and so on. So the guy who, who did this course, Jeffrey Sachs, he was involved in making these sustainable development goals. So you can see that these goals are a little bit related to what we were studying in this, this course, right? So he was one of the main consultants for the, the world leaders when they were making this kind of goal. What do you think about these goals? <coughs> what do you think about these goals? Do you think they can do them or not? Yes? They You're can try. Optimistic? They can try. Right? So it's kind of a 10 year plan, right? At least we have to make an aspirational goal for that kind of thing and get the people to buy in. So, like I said before, one thing is having the vision. So the UN has made the vision. But another thing is getting the people to follow you. So, are all the countries going to follow these goals exactly, even if they can we motivate them, get them to follow the goals, right? That's the real challenge. 
So we are going to focus a little bit on the number 10, in the, also in the next class, which is re relevant to businesses. Uh, so good governance. Business can use their own kind of governance, or uh, the government can use their own governance. So it means transparency. If we make CSR sustainability reporting, that's transparent. Accountability. If we make a problem, we take responsibility. Access to information. Participation. Companies participate with the NGOs. End to tax havens. Don't, companies don't try to avoid tax. Stamp out corruption. Companies don't do corruption. Okay? So we have some international rules about this. And the international rules should be made more consistent or stronger with achieving these goals. And also we need to uh, spend money for other goals like reducing poverty and other goals. And also the environmental one of climate change. So we'll discuss about that more in the next uh, class. Okay. We'll finish there for today. Thank you.